while i was exploring new landing page concepts this time i wanted to challenge myself with something more advanced something different way cooler than the usual gsap animated pages that's when i came across this landing page honestly at first glance it was a bit intimidating it looked complex but it was too cool to pass up so i decided to give it a shot if you take a close look there is a lot going on especially with the split image blocks and the dynamic mouse over animations but after a few hours of tinkering i managed to put together a pretty solid replica capturing most of the animations with just javascript and gsap in today's video i'm going to show you how you can create this interactive landing page for your website using html css javascript and gsap if you enjoy the video don't forget to like and subscribe and to unlock the source code check out the pro membership via the link in the description i'm pretty sure you are not going to find such resources on regular basis anywhere else especially at this price all right let's dive into the code for the html we are keeping it very simple first we'll add a nav with a link and a button that we'll use to flip the tiles then i'll include a section called bold where we'll dynamically render those tiles using javascript Lastly, we'll add a blocks container to hold our blocks with a wrapper inside it for the blocks. This setup will allow us to create square boxes for the mouse trail effect. And that's it. Let's jump into the styling. Before we jump into the CSS, I should mention that I designed these two images in Figma to use as masks for the front and back of the tiles. Of course, you can swap these out with any images you like. First, I reset the default padding and margins across all elements to ensure a clean start and I set the box sizing so that padding and borders won't affect the overall dimensions of the elements. Next, for the overall layout, both the HTML and body take up the full viewport width and height to make the design fully responsive. The navigation bar sits at the top of the page, absolutely positioned to stretch across the full width. I styled it as a flex container, aligning the link and button on opposite ends. I've disabled pointer events on the entire nav by default, but I've enabled them on each individual element to allow interaction. The link and button uses a bold uppercase font style with the button in dark colors for contrast and a subtle border radius to match the theme. Now for the port section which fills the entire viewport, this section acts as our container for the tiles so I've added a 3D perspective effect to bring depth to the animations. Inside the board, we have got rows set to stretch out evenly with each row containing tiles that are spaced with a small gap. Each tile has a 3D transformation setting which allows us to animate its front and back faces. The front and back faces are hidden by default until they are flipped with smooth edges and rounded corners for a polished look. I used pseudo elements to add background images to these faces, giving each tile its unique masked appearance. This setup makes the tile look as though it has images embedded within its front and back.
for the blocks container it's a full screen overlay setting above everything else this container holds the small square blocks used to create the mouse trail effect The blocks are styled to be small squares with a thin transparent border that lights up when hovered over, creating a dynamic visual effect that responds to mouse movement across the page. And that's it for the CSS. Now we are all set to bring these elements to life with JavaScript. To start, I set up a few constants to define the board structure and animation settings. We are using 6 rows and 6 columns, meaning a grid of 36 tiles. Each tile will be 50 pixels and I set a cooldown of 1 second between tile animations to prevent overlapping animations. There is also a flag to track whether the tiles are flipped. The next step is defining a create tiles function. This function builds each tile element and gives it two faces, a front and a back so we can flip them. Inside the function, I set the background position of each face based on the tiles row and column. This ensures that the images align seamlessly across the whole board when they are displayed. It's a bit like building a puzzle where each tile knows its exact position in the big picture. Once the tiles are set, I moved on to the create board function. This function pulls it all together by iterating over the number of rows and columns to generate a complete grid of tiles. Each tile is positioned dynamically within the board section, allowing us to build the board entirely with JavaScript. With this function, we are essentially generating our board on the fly, positioning the tiles automatically so that they fit properly. When the board is set up, I added the tile animations. Here I created initialize tile animation function that attaches mouse and tile event listeners to each tile. The logic here is simple. When you hover over a tile, it animates a flip. I use the cooldown variable to ensure that the animations don't happen too quickly in succession by tracking the time since the last animation. Based on the tile's position, each one tilts at a different angle, giving a random yet visually engaging effect. I also added event listener for the flip button so we can flip all tiles at once by calling the flip all tiles function. Now let's look at how the animate tile function works. This function uses Z app to control the tile's rotation. The flag decides the rotation angle, so each tile flips based on its current state. I set it up so the tile flips back to its original position once the animation completes, providing a fluid smooth animation that uses rotation to create depth and dimension. Then I added the flip all tiles function. This function toggles the flag and animates all tiles to flip to either the front or back side using Z app's stagger feature. I introduced a bit of randomness to the flip timing which makes the entire board animation more dynamic and interesting to watch. Finally, I put everything into an init function to set up our interactive landing page. Inside this function, I first called create board function to render the tiles, then initialize the tile animations with initialize tile animation function. With the tile animations complete, I shifted my focus to the mouse trail effect. In the create blocks function, I calculated the number of blocks needed to fill the entire viewport based on the block size variable. These blocks cover the screen and act as the elements will highlight as the mouse moves. This gives the illusion of trailing effect following the mouse, adding another layer of interactivity.
Then I set the highlight block function. This function determines the position of the mouse and highlights the corresponding block by briefly adding a highlight class. Using the blocks row and column, I calculate the exact index of the block to highlight, allowing us to control the highlight effect dynamically. This effect gives each block a momentary glow, creating a smooth trailing animation as you move the mouse. Finally, inside the init function, I set up the blocks for the mouse trail effect by calling create blocks function, storing some key information globally. Lastly, I added a mouse move event listener to trigger the highlight block function as the mouse moves over the page. And that completes our interactive setup. Now we have a fully functional tile grid with flip animations. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.